Friends of all, of course, 1977, 46 years ago, when Dunfermline won in the Royal Silks. Lady Halifax on the left there in conversation with the King. South Yorkshire to have the King and Queen at their big event. Honestly, I've actually got a tear in my eye. It sent shivers down your spine, didn't it? It's lovely. What a reception they've been given. I think crackling's the word you use, isn't it, Jason, when a race course is like this? Absolutely. Could. Could it be racing royalty in the in the winner's enclosure with a Frankie de Tory or the real racing royalty. Who knows? The real royalty. <laughs> We've got it all, haven't we? For this year's St. Ledger, not only a really good field of horses assembled, plenty of chances throughout the card, only four stables represented, but top quality horses. Difficult to select the winner. I know Adele likes the King and Queen's horse here, Desert Hero. Jason fancies continuous. They're not long until the horses come into the parade ring for us to look at them. Lord Halifax, you can see in the middle, who arrived with the King and Queen today. And in the lilac suit you saw a few moments ago, that was Rachel Harwood, who I referred to earlier, who's the executive director here at Doncaster. And they've worked pretty quickly with the rumours circulating during the week and getting that royal box ready for today. And they have been rewarded. And you can see the interest this has got. You could tell from the newspapers this morning, really. And the photographers and the writers are here and the place in the sunshine now the sun's come out is looking pretty spectacular and Adele you think it could happen you think Desert Hero's got a massive chance here don't you? I do because it's a race where I'm just sat on the fence most of the season really the last couple of months trying to decide which horse I kind of really wanted to um, to choose and I think it's just the his bravery that we've seen so far this season coming into this race that that's what I really like about him. In a race like this, Ed, um, where you don't really know how the race is going to work out, you, you're going to have to ask your horse plenty of questions, and you need a horse that's going to really come through for you, and he's a real warrior. He ran in Ed's favourite race, didn't he? The London Gold Cup oh, earlier in the day season. <laughs> <laughs> and he finished only eighth that day, which didn't give you a huge amount of confidence going into Ascot, but William Haggis has said all along that he's a horse that took a while to come to hand this season, and just gradually, gradually he came to himself, sort of looking better in his coat, and then at Ascot, it was that really fast run handicap, wasn't it? Lots of horses went off too quickly. And he was able to really pick up the pieces but show great grit coming through the field, which again, he displayed a good one next time. And Marcus Armitage has written a piece in the Telegraph today explaining the story of it, how the London Gold Cup was so disappointing. And the Queen had said on her visit to the Haggises, we want to have lots of runners at the Royal Meeting. And two weeks before Ascot, William Haggis got the right signs and he rang John Warren clearly and said, we're in business. And the rest is history, provided them with that historic first Royal Ascot win, which they both so enjoyed. The King in particular, and since then I think he's taken real enjoyment out of wins around the country and other runners, and here comes the hero himself. And this horse, this ball, we mustn't forget about.